Welcome, folks, to another episode of That Ninja Show. Should know one here, and I'm in my sporting my 40th anniversary Ninja 3 exclusive That Ninja Show t shirt. So, what does that mean? Probably that I just got done doing an interview and an awesome one at that. Uh, this one. Well, if you saw Sam's interview, which I hope you enjoyed, um, I really had a good time with that one. I uh, sent out a message to someone in particular and asked her, would you be interested in doing an interview? And did not expect her to respond. Uh, a lot of times I, you know, I do send out uh, little requests to see if people would like to talk about these movies. And sometimes I hear back from people and sometimes I don't. And I know some people don't uh, like to do too much stuff in the public eye. Um, so this time around though, I did get a response from the one and only. You know her as Lucinda Dickey from Ninja 3, The Domination. She responded to my request and I lit up like the 4th of July times a million. Uh, so I was super excited. Didn't want to spoil it. So I kind of, you know, was excited and reached out to a few people and said, hey, think of some questions for her. And they're like, are you serious? Is this really happening? I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. So I uh, met with her. Uh, talked with her for a good while. We had some really good laughs. It was great sitting down and laughing with her. You are going to see me in full giddy as a schoolboy mode. Um, she was really fun to talk to and just had me laughing and everything. But of course, you know, as with all of us here that are, that are you know, ninja film fanatics, we, we all had crushes on her in Ninja 3. So, you know, I um, I had a senior moment when I was sitting there talking to her. I got kind of lost in the cause there of, of talking to her that I forgot her co-star Jordan Bennett's name. Jordan, I don't know if you're watching, but if you are, my sincere apologies, my friend. Just got caught up in the moment about how bad New Coke formula was. And then I'm also talking with Lucinda. So anyway, uh, it's going to be broken up into two parts. I want y'all to kind of enjoy the first part. Uh, I was really excited when I, when I did get Sam's interview done and I was kind of like, I, I had, you know, a few people were like, man, I can't wait to see part two. And y'all kind of influenced me where I was like, all right, I better crank out part two. Well, this time I'm taking a little bit of time folks. Cause I do got to catch up on some things. Plus I don't want to run out of material. Like I said, you don't want me to have a product review on painter's tape. So, I still have it there on my table. Anyway, um, so part one of this interview, we go into a bunch of questions that I had for her. Uh, and then in part two, we go into some, some questions that some of you asked. And then, of course, a few questions that I asked as well. Uh, again, I could have gone on forever, but of course... I didn't want to take up her entire day with questions, so this this interview goes over a little bit over an hour or so. But again, I broke it up into two parts, so you can take time, absorb it, have some laughs with us as well, and enjoy it. Um, for those of you who haven't gotten it yet, Ninja 3 is on DVD, or Blu-ray too. Well, this is the Blu-ray. So go out and get the Blu-ray. Uh, 40th anniversary is upon us. In September and also if you haven't gotten it yet you've got also stories from the trenches a uh, lot of interviews with Sam Furstenberg but look who that lovely person is right there yes so if you haven't gotten these items get them they are available on Amazon uh, if also, too, you want to get a shirt. These are still available. I will put the links to these items below. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, comment. Let me know your favorite Ninja 3 moment. Uh, and then also, um, 
if you're into the break-in movies as well, your favorite break-in moments as well. Because this is dedicated to Lucinda Dickey. Uh, this is her episode. So, yes, uh, this interview was was so much fun. Uh, I can't thank her enough. And what, you know, just the time that I had in talking with her. Again, I could have gone on the whole day, but I didn't want to take up all her time. So, anyway, on with the interview. So, part one upon us, part two next week. But for right now, part one, let's watch it go. Okay. So, she stole our hearts in the 80s from Grease 2 and Brickens 1 and 2 as an electrifying dancer to the aerobics instructor slash girl next door with a dark side thanks to an evil ninja. The 40th anniversary of Breaking 2 reaches its benchmark on December 21st. And continuing on with our look back at Ninja 3, The Domination, which turns 40 on September 14th. Our amazing guest is here to talk about how these movies have maintained a hold on us, like her evil ninja counterpart crushing a billiard ball. <laughs> Lucinda, thank you so much for joining me today on, on that ninja show. Thank you for inviting me. It's good to be here. And uh, it's been a long time, uh, 40 years. Long time yeah. since filming, but I can recall a lot <laughs> of the stuff just like it was yesterday. <laughs> so did you ever, in your wildest dreams, think that these movies like Break In and Ninja 3 would have such a strong following throughout this time? Um, No, I can't say that I thought that. But in the moment, uh, Break and Being the first movie um, that was released was such a big hit that uh, I knew it was it was big. I mean, I, you know, I, I knew it was good, you know, um, but I, yeah, no, I, I, I don't think I could have foreseen that people would still be watching it and talking about it and generations like several generations now. Um, we had a screening last weekend and there was an 11 year old girl there that knew everything. I'm like, wait a minute, has she watched Ninja? And she had, yeah. So it, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. I wouldn't have thought it. It's that, that whole crossover there too, because you kind of bridge that gap between probably people that would have never seen the other movie. Cause I know for myself, Ninja three was like, was like the show that I saw. And then of course, like, every guy that is that i've talked to already they're like i have a huge crush on her i was like i do too Shh, don't tell anybody <laughs> but then when uh breaking finally came out there was a buddy of mine that was big into break dancing he lived right across the street from me i was a ninja fan and i'm all like hey uh can we go see these breaking movies and he's all like how are you into these and i'm all like because lucinda's in them both <laughs> so he's like all right man let's go so that's so you didn't see breaking when it came out you waited till after ninja and then you saw the breaking movies because some of them <laughs> some of the movies got held here in in some of our smaller uh theaters for a long time like uh -huh. santicos is like a family-owned uh theater here in here in san antonio and so they would hold on to movies that that they knew were popular with the crowds and it's like hey we're gonna bring them back and play them again so when they wow. finally came back, I was like, let's go see him. You know, my buddy was like, are you serious? You want to go? I was like, yeah, let's go. So it was, it was awesome. awesome. And, and was actually Break and 2 opened very close to Ninja. So it probably, it could have still been lingering in the yes. theater. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a good turnout at the screening that you went to with, with Sam and the, and the character and the, it, the other cast it was, Yeah, it, it was a good turnout. Um, I think the last time that I had gone to a screening was the 25th anniversary uh, when I saw Michael and uh, Sam was not there. Uh, it was a completely different experience. I was sort of teetering on like, oh, do I really want to go? It's midnight. I'm old. I go to bed early now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I kept trying to think of excuses why I can't do it. And anyway, my sister is in town and I was just like, okay we're going to do this and we're going to get through it. And we had so much fun. I, we just laughed. I sat next to Sam uh, during the screening and I mean, we were just laughing out loud. It was hilarious and fun and funny. And I really, really enjoyed it. So, and I, it was so good to see the fans, you know, I, I'm not real active. Uh, 
I'm sure everybody knows, I'm not very active on social media and I've kind of just kept quiet in the background for the most part. Um, but I really did uh, kind of soak it all in. And there were some of the other dancers there that it was fun to see. I hadn't seen them in literally 40 years. So it was kind of cool. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you had fun. That that just I saw the pictures on on, on Facebook and I saw Sam post some pictures. And I was like, I was like, y'all look like y'all had a really, really great time. So I wish yeah. I had been there. Uh he he told me about it and I was like, maybe no, nah, I don't think I can make it out there. Work just had 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 a grip on me. So <laughs> that happens. <laughs> it does indeed. So for Ninja Three, this movie is often referred to, and I know that Sam even mentioned this. It's referred to as a hybrid or combination of movies where you have your action along with a hint of The Exorcist, a dash of flash dance, and a drop, as in room drop, of poltergeist. <laughs> um, <laughs> have you watched this movie with your family? Have you have you brought it out to them now and said, "Hey, this is my contribution to Ninja movies"? Have, has your family seen it yet? Um. I don't believe I have ever watched Ninja with my with my children. Um, I think they've seen it, but I'm just not really a big deal to them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am in other ways, but as a uh, mom, of course. Yeah. No, I think that um, I think we might have to sit down and have a family screening, you know, in, in celebration of 40 years, because all three films, uh, you know, came out in 1984 yes. you know so uh yeah i think we might have to sit down and do that and yes i i would think that would be awesome you know i, I see we it, did watch break in and break in two they were those were you know pg and uh i still have the vhs tapes that are i mean the covers are shredded from <laughs> like this, you know in and out of the cover in and out of the cover and you know I mean, I never thought back then, maybe save a clean copy just for memorabilia, but no, these are, they are just torn to shreds. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if those, if they would even play. <laughs> I had my copy of Revenge of the Ninja that I had told Blockbuster that it was lost. And then of course I ended up paying for it, which was like a hundred bucks at the time. But <laughs> that thing, it was like, it had been played through my VCRs, like, like for the life of me. And then a buddy of mine wanted to buy it off me, and I'm all like, I don't know if it's playable, man. I think if you open it or expose it to sunlight, it's just going to disintegrate. But <laughs> you wanted it. I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but it's crazy that to see that some of those tapes do last for a really, really long time, though. Now, I had Sam on here. I don't know if you saw his interview, but um, there, was, there was a funny moment with him, which was like right at the beginning of the interview, where... People are like, why did you why did you leave that in? And it was like, because even though he's retired from being a director, you could still see that he was on as a director. He's like, oh, what's up with the lighting and what's up with the camera angle? He's just he was constantly on. I was like, I'm keeping that. Did you do you have like a funny moment when working with Sam and in, in, in either Breaking Two or Ninja Three that just stays with you? And then you're like, that was Sam <laughs> or that's Sam when you see him now and such. Well, actually, um, during during the filming of Ninja, uh, it was quite something. I mean, we were on location in Phoenix and, uh, you know, everybody becomes a family, you know, when you're on set anyway. But we were all like in the same hotel and, you know, pretty much every meal together, everything. Um, but they, you know, he, he was a little bit of a prankster. When when we shot the exorcism scene, um, they we had shot it several times and I was freaked out about doing it because I'm claustrophobic and I just, you know, having my my arms shackled and, you know, mm. I was like it, it just scared me to death. And but, you know, I got through it, did the filming. And after one of the takes, um, they all just said, OK, lunch. And everybody just walked off set. They turned out all the lights. We were in a warehouse and left me chained up, screaming. No way. I was hysterical. And obviously they came back in and they just thought it was funny as hell. So, uh, yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, that that one I I will never forget. Um, there were a few funny things. We had a a cast photo at the very end, um, and everybody, you know, I mean the cast crew, everybody was on set, and this was uh, in the apartment that you know the tilted, <laughs> which is how I fell into the closet, got sucked into the closet. Um, Anyway, so they're taking the pictures and then all of a sudden they started, somebody activated it to start tilting it. And there's this picture of me. I'm the only one, because I guess they all knew that I'm like going <laughs> like this, like, whoa. Because <laughs> I thought they were going to like go all the way with it. And so, I mean, we had fun moments like that. Um, he was a great guy. You know, that was my very first job as an actress. I had absolutely no experience and I couldn't have asked for a better uh, director, human being in general. Um, he was very kind and helpful. Um, you know, we we would get into arguments because I was like obsessed about continuity. And, you know, I'd be like, well, wait a minute. No, that glass was over there in the last take. And the don't <laughs> worry, it's not a movie about the glass, you know. <laughs> and uh, so we had, you know, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it really was. It was hard work, um, obviously physically, you know, challenging. Uh, but it was really a lot of fun. He was great to work with. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> now, um we talked about the fans a little bit. Have fans of this this movie specifically with Ninja Three? Have they been good to you over the years? Hopefully, no one's chasing you around town with V eight juice or anything. No, mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> no. I actually, um, uh, the V eight juice comes up every now and then, and I know Sam recently posted something with it that he sent to me, and uh, it's I, you know it's funny because I was with somebody that hadn't heard it heard of it I you know looking at my phone I'm, I started laughing I'm like oh my god I can't believe you know this is still a thing and he's <laughs> like what are you talking about so I said I just googled v8 juice and it literally comes up to the top of google like v8 juice scene and it goes right to that scene and I'm like I'd never done that so uh yeah no nobody's chasing me around with it um you know I feel like you know for all these years of promoting VH juice, I I don't know. I should get something for that. There should be some royalties there, and then at least some royalties because, for that. I think be, yeah, it should be VH juice. Yes, I agree. And then also, you escape the 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 clinches of the new Coke formula when when it got handed to you by uh, uh, by uh, who was it? Oh, it was Billy Secord. Uh, I can't remember his name now off the top of my head. Jordan Bennett. Jordan Bennett. There we go. <laughs> waking up. Yeah, when he handed you the new Coke formula, ugh. Yeah. At least you 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 averted that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, you you mentioned that yeah you, you you've been kind of stay off uh, off of social media and such, but I know that some actors and actresses do like to do some conventions from time to time or appearances to get you know some time with their public. Would you ever do a convention if ever got approached to do one? I would consider it. I would. I, I, um, Michael had asked me when we were at the screening, he's like, you, because he, he does them, he does meet and greets and, you know, he's like, people are always asking about you. And, um, you know, just, I think in honor of 40 years that people are still talking about it and, you know, interested, I would consider it. Because I, I told Sam, I was like, I'm going to try and win the lottery, hopefully soon, or make a lot of money, because I wanted to do, like, the ideal canon convention and just have, like, the people that, that contributed to those movies over the years and have them there. And that's one thing that's kind of, like, in my dreams to do, so. And you will be getting, if, if this does happen, you will be getting contact. Gotta get right? everybody there, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Now, as someone who finds the black ninja outfit as iconic for Hollywood ninja movies, what was your experience in wearing that outfit? I know mine goes from zero to sauna in seconds, and I know that you were dealing with Arizona heat. I'm in Texas heat, but I'm inside, and I still get melted. <laughs> I, I pulled this jacket out of my closet. It was the closest thing I could find to the right color. <laughs> um, 
you know, it was, I always had on a little tank camisole underneath and uh, that jacket came off a lot in between. Um, we actually went through quite a few because they just disappeared. <laughs> and so we had them in every size and there were times that we would go, you know, to start filming, you know, for the day and they would bring out this big, you know, ninja, I, I call it a costume. I'm sorry. I'm a dancer, you know, so it's a costume. And, uh, I'm like, Oh my God, that's huge. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we have to wrap that thing around twice. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was hot. We were filming in the fall, but it would get cold at night, um, oh. you know, that desert cold. So we did a lot of night shooting. So it really wasn't as bad as what you might think. Like daytime, you know, we, the ninja did most of the damage at night. I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. Uh, there was a guy in Russia that recreated this outfit. And this is kind of like one of the most sought after outfits. So that was one question that everybody wanted to ask about, you know, what your experience was in it. Because everybody's been trying to get a hold of a, a more accurate replica. The guy that made this in Russia, he did pretty good. But there's still a lot of people that were like, I want the exact movie version. I'm all like, well, good luck. Hopefully we can find one one day. So we'll see. <laughs> Somebody's got to have them. That Somebody that took them all off the set. <laughs> yes. Somebody's yes. got to have them. Now, I know you mentioned in an interview once that there were some stunts that you really wanted to do. And they wanted you to leave it to the stunt people. But did they ever give you any opportunities to perform one of the stunts that you really wanted to do? Or I know you mentioned the, the graveyard scene, but was there anything else that you're like, I, you got to let me do this one? You know, um, kind of, but not really. The, the one that I didn't really want to do was climbing the telephone pole. And I didn't climb, they used a stunt double to climb all the way to the top, but I had to learn to climb 12 ish feet, um, which was high enough for me. And, uh, because they needed to get me getting on the pole and starting the climb. And then they cut to, uh, Steve Lambert, who was my double for that scene, <laughs> climbing all the way up to the top. And then they literally put me on a cherry picker and stuck me on top of a 40 foot pole. And um, I had to get the claws in my boots into the pole, wrap the safety belt around. And they had a box there that was actually empty because, you know, of course I was a telephone lines woman and I was supposed to be tinkering with the box, you know. I was terrified. I mean, they literally drove it away and left me on top of the pole. Could have been another opportunity for a prank. I'm glad they didn't do it on another that lunch one. break. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, there were a lot of the uh, stunts that I knew were out of, I mean, I was not a stunt person. I was a little bit of a daredevil. I, you know, had my gymnastics ability, which is why, you know, the, the fight scenes were frustrating for me because I actually shot every bit of those fight scenes and they still would interject stunt doubles into them. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if the general public sees that stuff, but I do when I watch it, I'm like, you know, okay, there he is. And there, you know, because it kind of, I mean, Steve, he's a man, <laughs> you know, yes. a little taller and bigger. And, you know, um, they, although they did have a woman that did the scene in the graveyard, um, they wouldn't let me do that flying roundhouse kick that I was like, come on. It was off of a trampoline, like mini trampoline. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, this is my, uh, this is what I do. But they were just so worried. Like if I twisted an ankle or anything happened and they always have to be a, you know, careful with, um, you know, they don't want anybody to get injured. So exactly. because that would definitely hamper filming. So, um, yeah, but no, I didn't want to jump out of any big trees or do some of the dangerous stuff. I was not interested. The car going into the the pond, not, not so much. No, <laughs> not hanging out of the helicopter or anything like that. No, no hanging out of a helicopter. <laughs> no. I I've gladly let them do that part. <laughs> 
Now, were there any scenes that didn't make the movie that you wish had been in the final cut? Was there anything that you recall that was like, what happened? I, you know, I wouldn't know because we, because we were on location and the way Canon works that they, you know, it's everything's kind of done fast. So they would allow us occasionally to go in and watch the dailies, which they don't normally do that because they don't want, you know, actors to get in their heads, but, you know, so we watched a lot of that. Um, but I couldn't really tell you, um, you know, the script changes happen as you go along. You'll show up and they have new pages for you. They've changed a scene, added a scene. They did change the entire ending um, with Shokasugi. And I had already started filming Breakin. They'd cut my hair off. And, you know, it was like months later, I had to put on a wig and we drove out into the desert and, you know, north. I can't remember where we were. It was in California, though. Uh, to reshoot the ending, um, you know, that's kind of a scene that I wish wasn't there <laughs> because when I see it, you know, there was nothing happening. It, it was Sam saying, okay, now he's going down into the crevice and, you know, the, you know, black ninjas, you know, coming after you now and pretend it's an earthquake. And I mean, it was just hard. And Jordan and I, I mean, we're trying not to laugh half the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just kind of comical. Um, and I, you know, yeah. So I, I, but I don't really know of any scenes that maybe could have been in there that weren't. Gotcha. I, cause our, in my interview with Sam, he talked about the, the economic side of it where Canon has a contract where it's, it can't go beyond 95 minutes. And so he told me the reason why some of these scenes that we knew about got cut. And so I was like, all right, that's interesting to know. So, and I was like, well, all right, I can at least, you know, understand the reason behind them cutting some of these scenes, but some of the scenes he mentioned were really interesting scenes. So now well, maybe I have to ask him someday what they are, because <laughs> I don't really, the, really the remember. One scene where it's more expanded between Shokasugi's father being killed and him fighting all the ninjas. And then there was also the one at the swimming pool where some guys tried to kill show there in America at the swimming pool. Suppose, supposedly those right. scenes did happen, but they ended up being cut because of time constraints and such. So, um, And that happens all the time. Yeah. So. Now, of course, 80s were packed with sensory overload. Uh, some great music came out in the 80s. Of course, some great movies. The genre movies that, that were mostly in the 80s were, of course, action movies, but we saw a lot of not only just men of action, but we saw action ladies of the 80s. And so I've always kind of rated you in my top five of action ladies of the 80s because oh. you have you have that you have that tough girl attitude as the as the aerobics instructor, like taking on those dudes at the outside of the gym. And then but then of course you're also you know possessed by an evil ninja, but still. You still had that that active presence and that commanding presence too, where I was like, she's not someone you want to mess with. So you got you, no. you got to adore her and, and admire her for that. So like my top five, you're in there. There's like Carrie Fisher from Empire Strikes Back, Sigourney Weaver from Aliens. There's you from Ninja Three, Karen Allen from Raiders of the Lost Ark, and then Linda Hamilton from Terminator. Though that was a great that was a great decade of action movies. That I was just like. Hell yes. And then I know some people now in the more modern age, they say, oh, we were, you know, we're the the pioneers of, you know, action ladies in movies now. I'm like, kind of taken away from these ladies who really established themselves, in my opinion, and to a lot of other people as well. So, yeah, I mean, it just was what it was. I, uh, you know, often on the weekends, I'll, you know, watch old, old movies um from that era and there definitely was a style um whether it was action or not that is just I don't know I just find it kind of hilarious and adorable um you know makes me feel a little better about myself for for the films that I did um you know they obviously weren't you know I mean they were very popular but they weren't a you know it wasn't like a list stuff material um yeah but it 
I mean, for me, I moved out to Los Angeles to be a professional dancer. I grew up in a dance studio and that's all I wanted to do was dance, dance, dance. And so for me to be cast in that film, obviously I had done Grease 2 before that as a principal dancer. But, um, you know, I felt like that was why I got cast because of my physical ability with the, you know, gymnastics and dance training. Um, and then of course that led on to break in and, and break in two, which was, you know, part luck. I don't know if that would have happened had I not done Ninja, if they, if I wasn't on their radar, who knows, you know, probably not. Um, but yeah, it was really a lot of fun. And, uh, I, I know, I didn't think at the time to do those three movies back to back, how hard that was, but I was 23 years old and I was very capable, but man, I was fit. <laughs> I mean, that was a lot to do. And, you know, Ninja, even though that wasn't a dance movie, but they trained me from the minute I landed and showed up, I started training to fight be able to fight and learn the stances. I'd never done karate before or anything like that. So, um, you know, it was kind of awesome. I loved that. I liked being a badass check. Hell yes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and that's the thing is that is is that in the eighties you really did have where where you did have you did have women in action movies that kind of just stood and and they didn't they didn't need to. They didn't need to downsize what the guys were doing. You were just on, you just met on that level. The way, the way that I saw that with Carrie Fisher, the way that I saw that with you, you weren't taking anybody's crap in that movie, in, in, in the movie of, of Ninja 3, but also too, you learned all those dance moves for a break-in, you know, mm -hmm. being an experienced dancer, but learning a new style, you, you really absorbed that and overcame a lot of a lot of the resistance to to get through all that, especially in in you know dealing with a martial arts film too, and it being your first time de dealing with martial arts. Everybody, you know, everybody that I talked to was like, "Yes, she's up there for action ladies of the '80s." I'm like, "I'm right there with you, brother. Let's go." So <laughs> that's why I was super excited when nice. when very you gave nice me this opportunity to work <laughs> to talk with you because it's like everybody that I've talked to so far, they're like, I "Had a crush on her so big time," and then she was awesome in Ninja Three. I was like, "I know." So again, I really enjoyed your contribution to the Ninja films of the 80s. The 80s itself was a decade filled with spontaneity. And Ninja 3 had that, that, that combination of elements that was popular during that time. And you were one busy lady, like you said. You took on all three of those films. Your work ethic was just like through the roof there. Did you did you have any downtime between those films? Or was it just, all right, on to the next thing? There was not much downtime at all. Um, we came home, uh, I believe, just before Christmas um, from Ninja. And they were already, uh, you know, there was talk of breaking when I was there in Phoenix, but I was still on my Ninja mission. Uh, <laughs> so it really wasn't until I got back. And I I was up at the uh, Canon building, wherever, I don't, you know, I don't remember all of the details, but we were doing looping. There were a lot of scenes that we had to do voiceover because we were outside a lot. There was planes, hell, you know, a lot of interference. And um, Sam took me in to meet, you know, uh, you know, the uh, director and uh, producers for break-in and, um, you know, it was, I mean, it literally just kind of rolled right into that because of the audition process. I had to audition for it. I didn't, I was not just handed that role. Um, I went to an open call and made up a dance routine that I thought looked a little enough like break in. I had, didn't know how to break dance at all. Um, but I went with a friend and I just threw in a bunch of gymnastic moves and, you know, I just wanted them to see that I, that that's what I did do. I mean, the little bit of dancing, that dancing, that evil ninja way in, in Ninja 3, you know, that was not dancing, dancing, you know, um, and the aerobics. But yeah, so it we really just, it just went, rolled right into that, you know, getting the part, starting rehearsals, learning break dancing was brutal, way harder than learning ninja moves, way harder. <laughs> 
I mean, I was bruised head to toe. I, you know, never quite got the windmills. I mean, I did, I tried my hardest. I eventually did get them a few times, never seen on film. Um, but yeah, no, it just rolled right into it. And we did have a little time after uh, filming break in. Uh, we went on a tour, uh, did a world tour. And, but, you know, that wasn't downtime because we were, working and dancing and doing interviews and television show, you know, it was, it was wild. It was a wild ride. It just like, just kept going and going and going. <laughs> so it was pretty awesome. And especially when doing those press junkets, because it's just, you're going to so many different places and then, and then sometimes that, you know, reporters will ask the same questions and you're all like, yeah, no, <laughs> you're like, I got that. <laughs> That one. I know we would sometimes do, you know, two, three in a day, just depending on, you know, what, whether it was a radio or, you know, a live event. Um, I remember doing a halftime of a basketball game somewhere, <laughs> somewhere on the East Coast or <laughs> in the South. I don't remember where it was exactly, but yeah, we, it was fun. I mean, we, you know, we were just soaking it all up. So, that brings me to my next question. Which was more difficult, preparing for the talent competition of for Miss Kansas, learning those break dance and moves for the breaking movies, or learning to climb a telephone pole in Ninja Three? Oh, hands down, the telephone pole was so hard. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> it was. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I'll be honest. When when I prepared for the pageants. I have to say, you know, my first pageant that I did was uh, the Miss Dance of America pageant. Um, and I won the Kansas City chapter, went on to uh, compete in the national competition in San Francisco. Um, but I was not, I was a very introverted person and I was not good at interviewing. I, I just, I would freeze up and you know, that really actually was very hard for me to prepare for because I had to somehow come out of my shell. And the only way I knew how to do that was when I was dancing. I could become any character. I could do anything dancing. But you ask me to speak and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, so that actually was very hard for me. And, um, you know, I think for break dancing. Uh, you know, learning the ninja move. I mean, again, it was like choreography. It's just a different style, you know, so I just did the best I could. Um, I wouldn't call that the most challenging. I mean, it was hard. It wasn't easy, but that was what I did. And that's what I had been trained to do for many, many years. So, yeah, but the telephone pole, never again. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, we had a bunch of laughs during this interview. I, uh, I I had so much fun. Like my face was like was like just sore from from smiling and laughing so much. It was such a great interview. Part one in the books, there, folks. Hopefully you liked it. Uh, part two next week. So around the same time, uh, I'm gonna try and stick with a with a schedule where we're going about every every Wednesday with something. So. Um, yep. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Comment below. Let me know what, uh, what part of this interview you liked the most. And then, um, yeah, part two upon us and then some more, uh, retrospect with the master, some more retrospect with some of the movies and then hopefully some more interviews. And then I still have in the pipeline to interview some of our shadow warrior collectors. I want to talk with you. You guys out there that watch these, you, I need to talk to you. I want to see what you collect if you want to share. Uh, I also want to know what got you into it. What movie caught your attention the most? Um, do you train in, in in jitsu or or other martial arts? Uh, myself, I've been dabbling in a lot of different martial arts over the years. Um, I last left off with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Kali. I'd like to get back into them, uh, as well as I'm already still working on Aido right now. But I'd love to get back on the mat again, but I just got to see how my back will react. It's been a while. Plus, I haven't really done much since my heart surgery. So, anyway. 
But back to what's up, what's on the subject here is interviews part two next week. And then, uh, yeah, once again, like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, if you want to support the channel, this is still available. Uh, Sam has one. Lucinda has one now, too. And then, of course, I've seen a few uh, friends out there that have made some some That Ninja Show shirt purchases. Thank you very much. Again, your, your, uh, your support in the uh, channel goes a long way here. I really appreciate it. Folks, thank you again for tuning in. See you guys next week. And enjoy. Take care.